Yes, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more today about the uh, School 4.0 digital strategy in Austria. Um, my colleague, uh, Heidrun Stromeyer, uh, told you a little bit about that at the beginning in her opening speech. And uh, now I would like to go a little bit deeper. Um, we have four pillars in our strategy called School 4.0. Um, about two years ago, we started to consolidate all the um, initiatives that we had before into this new strategy, uh, which covers all the, project, all the projects and all the initiatives. Um, and it's consisting of uh, four areas, four pillars. The, Sorry. Um, the first one is digital competences um, of students. The second one is digital competences of teachers and teacher training. The third one is about infrastructure. Um, and the last one is about digital media, especially uh, digital textbooks and open educational resources as well. If we take a look to the first pillar, there we have um, some kind of pilot projects, especially in the primary schools, in the elementary schools in Austria. So we started with uh, 100, a bit more than 100 schools. Um, we gave the schools some kind of material, digital material, um, to work with um, uh, computational thinking perspectives, um, aspects. Um, with um, digital material like B-Bots, Lego We Do, and, and iPads, uh, where we use Scratch Junior for programming skills. And the idea is uh, to make that in um, a gamificational way. So it is um, a project where um, students do not have a feeling about learning something. So it's fun. It's uh, really great fun working together um, and creating new skills uh, they did not have even before. It was a very important part on that project also to give this kind of material, all this kind of material, to um, the uh, teacher uh, colleges, um, which is responsible for teacher training in Austria. So we have 13 teacher colleges which we equipped with this um, kind of material, uh, the same material that also the elementary schools got. Um, and it was very important for us to start with the teacher trainings initially. Uh, before we gave the material to the schools, it was important that teachers know how to work with this material. The second point that is very important um, to tell you is um, covering the ages from 10 until 14 years old students, which is the lower secondary in Austria. Um, and for this school type, we have two school types uh, in that area, that what we call gymnasiums um, and the comprehensive schools. Um, and we created a new subject, we call that digital basic education. Um, and this subject covers four areas, which are here uh, on the slide. It's using digital technology or digital skills in general, which is about uh, operating systems, uh, about using office applications. So how to use a computer. The second area is uh, computational thinking. Um, additionally to what we do in the primary schools, we concentrate here on working with uh, BBC Microbits. Uh, we created, and this is uh, a project from the fourth pillar, in fact, but we uh, created, therefore, an open educational textbook for, uh, the, uh, for this area, for this uh, chapter of the curriculum. Um, so to use Microbits um, in, a, in a very different way um, in all the subjects, like mathematics, like German language, like foreign languages, um, geography, biology, and so on. Uh, so it is important to give uh, students an idea how to solve problems um, and to do it together. 
The third area is about media literacy and media competences in general. Um, that's a very important part because um, students should know how to use the internet in a safe way. Uh, is uh, about how uh, I can use material um, about data protection laws, for example. So all, uh, all that stuff, including social media, and that leads us to the fourth part of this curriculum. This is the, politi the political competence. So it is also important that students know how um, social media influences our whole life and our society. So digital competences are essential for taking responsible decisions in everyday life. And uh, with this new subject called digital basic education, we t try to bring this to all the students in Austria um, in the lower secondary schools. And that means, in fact, that every student is covered by this new subject. If we take a look to um, what students have or what, what kind of devices students use, then we see that mobile phones or smartphones are uh, very broad in use. Um, I think every student, 97% of the students, have such devices and they want to use it. So of course it is important for us um, also to enable the usage of uh, this kind of devices in uh, all the subjects in the schools. And that automatically leads us to some kind of a bring your own device strategy, but maybe more about this a little bit later on. Um, yeah, and students use their phones, use their smartphones um, in a very broad way and want to use it also in the schools um, for uh, a better, lesson for a, for a, um, for a better learning. Uh, and they, they, they want to share information. Um, they want to create pictures, for example, uh, and not writing it down. Um, they want to research, they want to make some research in the internet. Uh, they would like to communicate to each other and uh, with the teachers as well. Knowing how to use digital technologies sensibly is a necessary basic competence in addition to reading, writing, and mathematics. Um, it's, uh, it's an additional competence which is necessary for all our students to take the place in the society. Um, to get a deeper look inside the um, curriculum. This is um, a list of the topics of the curriculum. It's very broad, as I mentioned before, um, and schools have a very uh, flexible way of implementation. So how to implement and, and how much to, to implement, that's up to the schools. So the, school the schools decide um, if they implement at least two hours a week, that's the minimum. They have to implement at least two hours a week in the whole period of four years, uh, from the 10 years old until the 14 years, years old uh, students. But additionally to that, schools can also decide to um, teach a third or a fourth hour a week. And uh, the curriculum is a very flexible one, so you have this uh, this uh, um, uh, fixed part with the two hours and additional uh, two further parts which can be taught um, if the schools decide to do this. Yeah, um, due uh, to the time I, I, I go over on that, that should show you how flexible the implementation period uh, can be so the schools can decide when and where and how much they would like to implement of, that, of, of this uh, curriculum. So I step over. Uh, coming to the um, DigiCheck, that's a test toolkit that we offer for all the schools for free. Um, we have this kind of test for all the school types, for the primary schools, for the lower secondary, and for the upper secondary. Um, and it covers the whole curriculum. It is um, usable as a diagnostic tool at the beginning of uh, the lesson or of the teaching. 
um, and it is also usable for uh, testing at the end after uh, you taught the competences. So I'd like to come to the uh, second pillar. That's uh, the pillar about uh, the, the teacher competences and how uh, we, we get the digital competences to our teachers and what we offer to them um, to, to get better and to perform better. Um, we have um, created a project especially for that called uh, Digital Portfolio, a short uh, Digifolio, uh, which is a three-step model. Um, it contains a competence check for teachers, which is an individual test tool for the teacher. Nobody else than the teacher himself gets the information about uh, the results. Um, the teacher gets an idea what um, kind of information he or she needs and what kind of competences he or she needs and that leads us to the second step, a platform that offers all the, workshop, all, all the workshops, all the seminars um, which are available in Austria and uh, the teachers can uh, apply for those uh, workshops and seminars and that leads us to the last step where the teachers document their learning in a digital portfolio. And this digital portfolio can be used to present it for the headmaster um, and uh, to document that I or the teacher um, um, uh, got more digital competences um, during this period of time. We uh, follow a strategic uh, step model for uh, digital teacher competences, we call that uh, DigiComp, Digital Competences for Teachers. So that's the model um, that, that we use here. Um, if you're interested, um, you can find it uh, using the links shown below on the slides. Yeah, and as Tony uh, told you before, we started additionally to what I mentioned here, a network called eEducation Austria. Uh, the network um, contains more than 2,100 schools at the moment. Um, we have two different types of member status in this uh, network. The member school is a school that um, decided to perform as a digital school. So it's about school development, digital development in the school. And the second step is a expert school, a school that already um, made these steps, that already uh, went that path on. and. Uh, as you can see at the moment, we have um, about 900 expert schools and they have to reapply as an expert school every year. Um, that, um, th that leads us to the advantage that the schools really have to do a lot for reapplying, for uh, being re-accepted uh, as an expert school. And what you can see in the uh, box in the gray box on the right is the number of activities um, that the schools documented on their path to be an expert school. And the number is more than 18,000 activities that Austrian schools, the schools listed here, um, documented on the website. Well, it's really impressive. Pillar three is about infrastructure. And uh, looking for the time, I will be uh, a bit shorter now. Um, we concentrate on three areas concerning the infrastructure, broadband internet access for schools, Wi-Fi, availability of Wi-Fi in the whole school building, which is important for uh, using devices, mobile devices in the classrooms, and um, a bring your own device strategy for students and for teachers as well. And the last pillar is uh, about digital material. 
my colleague Hydron um, told you about the EdoTech. This is a portal that is available for all students and especially for all teachers where content can be found, where we offer content for free, and uh, where we use very advanced search algorithms uh, using artificial intelligence so that uh, teachers can easily find material um, for their lessons. Another project is eBook, eBook Plus, that's the electronic textbook, um, and it's now interactive, so it's an interactive electronic textbook. Uh, we use the digi for school portal, therefore, and it's available for free uh, for all the teachers in Austria and for all the students in Austria um, using our textbook project. And the third part in, in, in that pillar is open educational resources. I told you before about this uh, microbit project, about this microbit uh, textbooks that we created. This is the first textbook, digital textbook in Austria that is open uh, for everybody. It is a CC BY license. So that's the first textbook that can be copied for free and that can be changed for free from every teacher. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm just in time, I hope so. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and this was my presentation about the, uh, the uh, most important projects that uh, we use using our strategy school for the dough. Thank you very much and all the best for you.